Francis down on the veto. Okay. We look at the maybe some recency bias. Sure. Loud absolutely rocked Paper X here on split. They're starting on the attack. We know obviously that Fnatic have a lot of plans laid in place that have barely been demonstrated around this cipher, but it's like a very quick start. This <laughs> round here, the stun comes through. Asper's down the opening. Chronicle was deleted instantly. Look at the pace of this. Fnatic bullied away from it so far. Boaster, Alpha, and Leo, the last alive. And Alpha was not in his traditional spot. Finds Aspas, the plant yet to go down, and Boaster taking back space. Now with the plant in, they've got two alive, and Gowan's in on 35 HP. Holding towards that CT side where Fnatic are starting to gather. One flash to play with. This could be huge. Cowan's in taking close contact here with the Frenzy. Boaster's creeping onto the, the angle. Timing. Cowan's he just gives it up. He just turned away, but he looks back in time. Catches Boaster, gets the flash, trying to find out, buys a second or two. Might note that Leo has played ahead of this now, but two, he's going to be playing a little bit deeper with that ghost. Still paranoid of the wrap. Alpha clears through, steps back. Oh, two E's! What a start for Loud! What a way to open things up here on Split. Loud looking to take the fight to Fnatic. Off the rip, set the precedent very early in this first half. You noted it as well, Alpha traditionally over towards the A site here, a different pistol set up. The execution is perfect now. On the back of the Trailblazer here, Aspas the one to set things in motion and two E's to close out. Nice! That felt like an assassination on the site there. So well crafted. Cloud coming in with a game plan, executing it incredibly well. Now we look at what's coming to this round. Rifle with less. Oof. Didn't actually well, do yeah, any damage how? there. All right. Cohenzine on the Bulldog, the rest. Oh, and the Bulldog as well for two E's. So, I mean, for Fnatic, they are bringing at least a couple of Sheriffs, but a massive stack towards B. They're trying to set something up off the cam here. Spike not committed just yet. Trailblazer are going to explore through mid here from Cohenzine. Still won't figure out the heavy spot. presence. Now, as if they've got a decent enough read here as Fnatic look to explore middle. Now, meanwhile, on the way towards the A site. We have to catch this ahead on heaven. Yeah, that high flash revealing that there is no one waiting, maybe behind screens, behind pillar. Looking for a burst potential here, though. Already, Spass wants to be the gatekeeper here. Plant's going to come in. Feels a little bit of that pressure. There's a lot of players on this side by heaven, so Aspas does need to be careful. He is the one with the big boy gun that right really there. wants to be able to keep in hand here. If that falls through, maybe it could be a problem, but no, it's Sadak keeping them at distance. Fnatic unable to close that gap yet. Yeah, that's so disconnected on this waiting so late. Two E's fine poster as well. Sadak to Leo. Aspas onto Chronicle. It's all wraps here. Unless Alpha can find it. It's just Sadak. Nice and clean work. That's four. Left standing. Bulldogs remain. Vandal remains. Be really happy with that. Sadak going down at the end of the world. So. Pretty decent bonus here. Now, on the other side for Fnatic, of course, they'll have the full purchase. What are they going to do with it? Again, I, I do want to see how they test that alpha setup, which has been notorious on split. Absolutely. You've got to assume loud, or at least Fraud will have uh, done the homework on this. That's something put in place to address it. Well, less is actually a pivotal part of that. So if you on the bonus, now they're going to prioritize mid. Cautiously doing it. Three players slipping a little closer here. This is Durka on a bit of a platter. No direct support, but maybe doesn't need it. Clean towards Aspas. And the pressure on the other side as well. Chronicle oh. down to 10, though. That's a little more dangerous. You can see Calentine wants in on that. Takes the space given just off the back of the headshot. Cam's going to spot this out, though. Yeah, no, I always look towards the clock and when that camera is removed and how quickly a decision is made on the back of it. Let's will spot out the second piece of utility here. They're not drifting an additional player over though, no. Fnatic. And with that contact, they'll probably commit to having three players still around this, but you can see the timing being worked out very nicely here for Loud. They've actually maybe threaded the needle just a touch. And even drawing the paranoia here is huge. Still find themselves an advantage here on the right side. Left. They have to try and close the gap. Gotta try and make the cross. Alpha's respecting it enough to sit deep towards CT. Not gonna be leaning forward, but Cowan's in getting aggressive and he's been rewarded.
spotted. Chronicles down and they bring it back to a 4v4 and they should have a plant very soon. Safe as well, tucked into the Five corner. Planted. Two players disconnected towards Ramp. Less has been here all the while here. Two, he's found one though. And the flash didn't catch. It set them into motion. It gives them that frag. Taken away Boaster, but Durka on a quick trade. Down again to a 3v3, but Less still has that rifle. Yes, Bulldog with Kalenzine, but still a chance here for Leo. Connects well, but the trade comes in. And Less has caught Durka. It's all on out for a 1v2. This is traditionally his site. People don't get their way with it. They don't get to convert these bonuses. But Alpha creeping forward, going to isolate the first. Look to pop the ult as well. Time is ticking. He's going to make a move, and Les has him. Fnatic faltering in these early rounds. The desk highlighted it, and we're seeing it here. Off to a flying start here to convert the bonus as well. Great progress towards some of these key ultimates, the Divide, the Seekers, the Rolling Thunder. Giving loud lots of opportunities in the next couple of rounds, Lauren. Well, they even have to rely on them in the next. First example of Loud maybe trying to exploit this very deep, this loose hold on a site. Very reliant on the utility. And some key damage done. Typically, Chronicle would be there in a position mm -hmm. to try and slow things down even further. This feels like a very well prepared map. Oh. Okay. <laughs> a little dangerous, but like again, a look at the, at the bit. This is still not a pretty buy for Fnatic, so they can achieve anything with this be quite impressive. Turret seeming to be a bit of a challenge, but they at least control the A side of the map. Try again here. Located by the boom bot, Sadak though. Secret's about this on the way in, tries to a little bit of damage onto Boaster. Able to slip away, no harm, no foul. 60 seconds left here. Just about, I don't Alpha think that. Well, I would have got the voice line there at least. So now do they pull a player over because Alpha normally is that talisman of that A site. I think they have to. Chronicle's now drifting away. They've got to respect that. Feeling a little vulnerable. But again, Fnatic still, these are all sheriffs. This is hard to land. 40 seconds, the divides on those key ultimates you noted now going to be invested. First frag bound. Follow up, Fnatic! Finding three, leaving last the last one alive. Spike now lost the choke point. Taking the breath away from Loud. This would be a monumental task for Les. Four players on the other side of that smoke. And one on the way. Alpha slowly but surely creeping around. Could be the Reaper. Les is tagged up, looking very vulnerable. Here he comes. Gonna spot him out and with 10 seconds. Toying with him here. 34 HP less. Ain't gonna be alive soon. It's just who finds it. Alpha is the one there. Mastercard, Thrifty, and a turn of the tides. And a flawless no less for the Thrifty. For Fnatic to get on the board here on split. Again, I think maybe noting Alpha here yeah, there, they feel like they're going to draw the rotation. Somebody's going to scramble to back him up. Because you've got to think, a, a blank canvas here, the read from now typically in the default on the defense, I guess, yeah. for, for them is two towards mid, two towards B, and Alpha kind of floating, playing off that utility. Let's see if Fnatic are able to play that to their advantage as well. Tough the big ults here, Mike. Show stop with Durka. Rolling Thunder, Seekers, lots to play with. And Aspas feeling no resistance in middle. But it is a little different on a site here. Much different. Yeah, in terms of expectations, you expect to see Chronicle in this position. Okay. In rotation here. Okay. Go to hold down the fort towards heaven. Boast up, keeping up towards rafters. Now just. Time and time again, trying to probe, figure out where these traps are set up. And it, it feels like they're trying to cause that rotation, right? Kind yep. of try, uh, toy with expectations, pull the third player to the wrong side of the map. But for now, Loud looking to keep it a little bit more simplistic if they continue along this path. They have got the right read for now. The third player is on the way. The ult's going to come in. Stall comes out from the paranoia, but Aspas is away. Sight control is there, and Fnatic should be respecting that. But Leo instantly punished. Sadak looking for a fly on CT, does make it across unscathed, and the plant will be there. Are they going to try and retake this almost? Spikes down. Also comes through with force on default, but yeah, Fnatic moving very quickly here, Lauren. Yeah, but look towards heaven, look towards mailroom. There is still going to be a thorn in the side. And maybe a rifle in the back. Alpha very cognizant of it, but up and over we go. Fnatic finding both players. Sadak and let's go down, but Ashbass given a second lease of life. How is he not checked on there? Boaster does trade it up, but Cowan's 
creeping closer in the smoke. Loud taking them away. A triple for Cowanzine. Securing the site. Keeping that spike ticking safe. And four now posted on the board. Fnatic do everything right on the way back in here. I love the amount of pressure. Even as the spike's going down, the aftershock comes through. There's a couple of people pressuring towards CT. Unfortunately, only amounts to two kills. Loud still comfortable in terms of how much they're able to disengage from sight. Draws out the showstopper as well. Circle will lose that going forwards. Loud actually, well, Aspas one away from the showstopper of his own. Three away from the lockdown as well. The next key ultimates that will be available for Loud. Most of to get very proactive on this. They have forced away. Didn't get the information he wanted off that, but maybe drawing a little bit of the utility. That's not necessarily typical as well, sending out this utility almost on a roll of the dice at the start of the round to try and find a first blood. Now we see a bit of more traditional, again, test towards A. It's going to be less constantly being that nuisance towards Alpha. He does have a support system in play, though. That is Cowanzine there. So that kind of tells a bit of a bigger picture this time. It's not just one play, but look how far Mess is getting. The camera is gone. Yeah. It's got space to work. Noted Alpha towards CT. And Cowanzine taking towards the side. The, the, the gold carpet's rolled out. They've got everything they want. Uh, Fnatic are going to be held here towards heaven unless they do something audacious and they don't. Cowanzine straight through the smoke. Punishes Chronicle. Plants coming in. They are absolutely unraveling Fnatic. Yeah, now on the 4v5. Fnatic have to try and find a way back through. Paranoia used up. Chronicle's down, so there's no real utility to initiate this outside of Leo. One flash in hand. Oh, but look at this angle for Aspas. Is Durka gone? Can he get away with his life? No, caught from the grave. Durka dra drags him back 3v3 now. Taking towards the site. Fnatic trying to creep closer. Pop flash. Push from Leo. Takes towards Pillar, but the timing's everything. Both trying to clear out. Couldn't turn in time. Fnatic! Break back through. Life in them yet. A near on immaculate start there for Loud to get towards the site, to get that spike down. But resilience now being shown. And this one so comfortably favours Loud. In terms of the utility we see, in terms of Chronicle falling as well. Off the rip as well. I don't think he's actually invested anything ahead of what he's found inside remaining. the smoke. Fanatic timeout. Can we get minicamp? Still not happy. No. They won the round, Mini, I promise He's you. He's hitting the timeout button there. Yeah, you can see it's like, no. I mean, this is the first... Okay, so let's go to win conditions against Fnatic on this map and, and the protocol list that we often talk about. Well, just just quickly to come go back ahead. to that is what I noted at the start of that round. You don't often see Fnatic rolling the dice in terms of random investments of utility to power and out through being made to try and actively take an engagement. Usually it's it's all to slow down. It's on the back of the, the opposing team basically finding contact somewhere. And traditionally, uh, in terms of the indications, Leo's not flashing over towards A. You've got to expect that towards mid. You have to expect something maybe set in motion elsewhere. But that, that's a little bit concerning. Uh, like I said, there's a few rounds here where we've had the example of Loud coming forward, actively dealing with the spy cam in heaven and weakening that, I, I guess, the mid-round possibilities yes. that, that Fnatic rely on so heavily. And I love the way that they're kind of like, not just doing it as this kind of like one-sided approach, it's not this singular, you know, uh, No, it's all stack. encompassing, yeah. Exactly, it's really nice to see. Loud have come into this extremely well prepared, or at least diligent of what to expect against Fnatic on this map. And again, with Loud, it was, is this the return to form? Obviously, they look fantastic here, but you can't ignore what happened on, in Tokyo, right? That was something that was carved into our minds. Zero two out instantly, very surprising. But now, this is much much better. But the finances were certainly not stable. Look at the state of what Loud are left with. Suffering a little bit, but a bit of a pace change here. Atspas does have the showstopper, but the stinger in hand as well. And this is an instantaneous denial, and maybe a little overcooked there from Leo. Uncharacteristic from him. As Durkin now forced to pick up a little bit of those pieces. Spike is down, so he's going to be trying to be a little bit more proactive on this. Heartbreaking for Aspas as well. I think his paint shell bounces off Leo's face back into Mayo. <laughs> Gotta go elsewhere, we'll find Cowan Zine. Not even sure how he's got to that position. Now, the one thing Alpha's that I am fight. noting is that Tui's has. Okay, Alpha's just turned around. Yeah. I started to get a little bit nervous. I mean, he's only got a ghost, yes, but. Alpha's 45 angle. HP. Yeah, this is. That's good. That's fine. Nice reposition and a good heads up bit of work there, just making sure that no one could slip through B main. 
and Les was trying to kind of trail this pathway. And a 1v4 is incredibly difficult, especially with the double face. Oh. Fnatic. Getting up to three now, getting closer on the score. There's also, as you did talk about, Showstopper, Lockdown, Rolling Thunder even on the cards for Zadak as well. Only two away from that. And Seeker's already back. Let's go here. Cowan Zine's back pocket. So opportunities are plenty here for Loud. On the side of things, I mean, Chronicle being the next one up that's key for them. Two away from the Rolling Thunder. Again, I think at this point now, things may actually start to slow down a bit. Loud are going to stick to this mm. default. I, I also see something else slowing down, and that's the <laughs> clock. That's actually a joke. How is it always when we're casting? Tech pause. All right, folks. We're not doing the bingo card today, are we? Well, I don't know how desperate the desk is for content yet. The bingo card could roll out. I'm seeing Mimi look very excited by the prospect. Um, not sure what's going on here. Hopefully we get a little update for you guys, but uh, clearly not ideal. Um, but <laughs> let's kind of recap what we've seen so far. So sitting at three to four, I mean, being very honest about this, the desk kind of highlighted that there has been a dip in certain areas of Fnatic's game plan, right? Coming into this, the pistols, the bonuses, all of this sort of stuff. Sure, and we didn't touch on this ahead of map one starting, but one of the interesting things for me as well, we think about the, the comfort in terms of not really changing comms, not really being tested, and uh, obviously the way that Fnatic spoke about uh, themselves as a team after the, yeah. the liquid loss in the finals. Uh, it is a bit of a concern to see maybe Fnatic come back and have to play against a team that they have lost against here at Champs and be forced into a position to, to maybe adapt in some ways. I think Loud is a perfect example of a, a team that they don't come in like fisted. No, they, do they do not. And uh, just in case you are wondering, and I think you might have caught a glimpse of it there, I think Chronicles Monitor is having an issue or two. So I think they're going to try and fix that up for us as soon as possible. So thank you for your patience. Um, I'm, I, I also, production told me it'll be fixed in like 20 seconds. So don't worry about it. I may have added that on. I don't want to be the pessimist. Right. <laughs> Tell me how you feel, Michael. Well, I'm pretty sure I heard the spawn barrier drop, so the round started. But we'll park that one for the time yeah, being. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to talk about no, that. No, 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 no. It'll be fine. It's It'll be fine. totally fine. Oh, I didn't expect to fill on this game. No? No. I was, I, you know, I was lulled into a false sense of security. That We've had too good a run. Exactly. LA, though, That's the fair. problem. That's the problem. And it was like on the other side. Um, but let's let's kind of talk Beto then. Let's go bigger picture because we've discussed what we've had so far, which is quite a, a close-up view of this matchup instantaneously. But then, again, talking about Split, we've kind of covered what we're looking for and what we're looking out for, and I think it's played quite well to our tune. However, shifting that into Ascent then, Michael. Well, well hang on. If okay, I can just come back to Split. Please, I, go I ahead. Want, I want to come back to something that, that, that obviously Minnie's spoken heavily about. It's like, oh, yeah, we've... We've got away with murder. We've not been tested, and sure. uh, that's why you know uh, potentially why he looks so frustrated in some rounds. It's like against the team that does their homework and punishes you for these mistakes, it's unacceptable. Those Absolutely. those are the things that, that that just will not slip. And if mm -hmm. this is now the moment where a team has finally sure. come up with a plan to address the way the Fnatic play here on the defense, then. That this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. You, you come back into a game playing against something you've already conceded a series loss to here. Very true. Split aside, then actually how how well versed are some of these adjustments? I don't know how many times they've had to test run them, right? It's it's kind of walking a little into the unknown because not many teams have been able to force them to this. Yes. But like, last, last time we saw Fnatic on split, they were getting a little more proactive. On yes, they were. We saw them actively clearing three man down ramp. Mm -hmm. So the trailblazers that set things in motion. Alpha and Conical actually taking the space away from that lurk on the extremity, but it's all theory. It is, yeah. It's all theory. We're waiting for the actionable side of things. There, there's a hint of that with the paranoia play. Yeah, was boasting made, getting a bit more. They're, they're happy to kind of show their hand early on. Whereas previous, like, it's a big question mark. Yeah. Where, where is the trap play set up? And uh, historically, this is a good map, I guess you could say. There are very few losses, and the only one really is to Loud, obviously. Um, a couple of close games, though. Yes, roll your mind back to the kind of best of fives we're looking you know, head to head with EG. Yes, EG got double digits, but they didn't convert. Again, Fnatic do have depth to this, but yes, I think you highlighted it well. We haven't seen the actionable, tangible proof of those adaptations I yet. mean, the other, the other one is that, uh, yes, it's a much looser narrative to lean on, but sure. we see Fnatic test it, right? Forced to dig a little deeper, forced to make something out of some of these timeouts, forced to... 
maybe turn a page or two in the playbook and, and, and bring something out. And I guess in terms of adaptation, that's, that's where Loud kind of thrive. They, they, they have the firepower here to actually lean into that sort of play style. And I think it's very easy to almost overestimate recency bias with Loud, even just outside this event. You look at Tokyo and you're like, oh, okay, well, 0-2, that wasn't great. You know, they started a little bit more shaky here. They were part of El Clasico for a while. I mean, they are heavyweights in their own right. They're one of the teams that are certainly put up there. So when you see them starting to hit that confidence, hit that form again, they do become a side that can absolutely best Fnatic on the right day. Now, obviously, in the bigger games, right, we're talking grand finals, you're talking about mostly Fnatic having their number in that. But they were the team that forced them down to this predicament, and I do believe we're jumping back into game. So thank you for your patience. Let's get back into this one. Three to four. Loud on the attack here. Fnatic on the defense. What have they worked out? We did know just before. The poor, some key ultimates now available for Loud. The showstopper, the Seekers, and the Lockdown. Early investment here from Sadak at the fault line. Nothing on the other end of it, but we'll get two E's onto a deeper angle. Concealment. I want to see if Loud maybe start testing that fact-finding that Fnatic want to start getting into. It looks much different now, though. Boaster singing up towards heaven. It's actually Durka and Leo towards that site. We're seeing Chronicle drift away from this position event much earlier. But I wonder what the signifier is as well yeah, for them. Yeah, exactly. Because there's not been much shown, really. I, I don't know if it's a lack of certain utility, a lack of presence at a certain time point, but they are reading it correctly. Lockdown set, pain shell posted, forced away. Seeker's going to come out as well. This is a lot going into this round. I don't think the aftershock or the pain shell's going to do no, enough damage. No, neither did Durka. Oh, he still tried to do everything. He tried to do it, but he's so vulnerable. Just caught up, hands tied. And a 4v3. Sight's under control. Aspas actually diving a little bit deeper. Full CT control here. So their eyes have to drift towards heaven. They have to be paranoid about this one, surely. That one's going to come down. Cowan's in position late could be critical, could be essential. But does this retake even get started here? Not really. Less denies the first prong of approach. And Aspas on the follow-up. It's all on Alpha. And I think he knows his days are numbered. He's drifting away. 1v4. Able to get his way back into heaven here. Cowan going to be the first, but... Beautiful. Will fall at the first hurdle. And this... <laughs> The smallest of details, less putting the lockdown on top of the crates there in B main. The paint shell doesn't fully connect. The aftershock can't follow through. You see it becomes a little bit chaotic there. I think Fnatic fully convinced that the lockdown was going to be removed. Well, Durka stuck around. And it was like, well, it's, it's, it's sticking, so I got, I got to try and play ahead. Fortunately, he did get one, but that was about it. Round not theirs, breaking that. Two in a row that Fnatic started to build back on. Still enough money. Okay. And the aggression being implemented again. The flash. Did come in. Most has got himself the end of it. Oh dear, this could be dangerous He's to stuck the, in the gravity world as well. The paranoia though. The paranoia slowed it down. That's perfect, but how long can Booster last here? How is he standing? Darker and Leo, the perfect supports for him. And now Kaunzine and Les, they are so far away from this. Let me spot it on the camp. Straight away here, Alpha. Relay that information. Still has Chronicle by this side. Spike not necessarily noted here. Cowan's going to have a chance to retain it, but Les has to find something in this lurk. 60 seconds left on the clock now. He's got to sell him. Can he? They're playing so safe. Look how deep they are sat on this Fnatic. I mean, one kill will draw everybody this side. They're, they're, they're nearly there. Yeah. So a little bit of a question mark still towards B Heaven from Durka and Leo. He saw him. He absolutely saw Chronicle. All the timing, though. Chronicle's going to get away. But again, they're selling the idea, right? The concept that they're in this position. And actually, you're seeing the adjustment now. Kaunzin coming up towards Heaven. They feel as though maybe they've got the cross here. But less. The angle. The flash. He, how is he alive on this? They're so tentative, so scared to find this fight. But Alpha punished on the cross. Caught as Kaunzin gives himself a chance for the plant. 2v3 now. Does he lose his life for this? No. Gets away standing. Let's go. Another one. Darker. This could be a 2v4. No way. Less. Catches out loud. It's so individual from Fnatic. Faltering here. That's Chronicle towards the site. This guy, truly renowned for his capability, but flashed up, forced down, loud. Miracle work. What an absolute fumble by Fnatic, though. A 2v4. Loud pulling off what feels like an impossibility versus a team like Fnatic. 
shouldn't I be I mean, happening. it starts off unorthodox as well. Fnatic getting hyper-aggressive into B main. Yes. Nearly punished with the response and utility. But there were individual fights, Mike. That's what baffles me. You don't Never see that. that. You Never. do not see it. And credit to Loud for dividing and conquering, yes, but still, you got to be looking at that from a really clean perspective that that was a mistake from Fnatic there, but credit to Loud for capitalizing on that. Absolutely. Beautiful work from them. Quick flash, no follow-up. Loud back into this, just stretching that lead away now. All players will come through. Oh, Cow and Zine here. Uh, uh, look at the intent here from Fnatic. Mm. Two in vents, two in heaven. Same sort of thing. Loud this time are on the other side of this. Now, they've had a little bit of freedom in mid here. They have. We've seen Asmas take that space, kind of working off the back of it. This is the time we're seeing a real pop. Oh, dear. Durka sends them scurrying, but it's Leo to actually find Kowenzine. So Loud now halted this time around. Look at the chip damage on Les suffering from this. No heal Beautiful. to be had. This is much better. Herding Loud around the map now. Fully prepared for that follow-up. And with Les so low, this is a very difficult round. I was just trying to find something on the paranoia here. Got the TP behind the aftershock being invested here, but maybe noted. He's tagged up now to 52 already. Be a shot in the dark or whatever you want. Oh, he's, you, you don't fall at this point. And they're readdressing middle. They've drawn all the eyes towards B main, right? Smoke's gone in. So Fnatic can either assume they're behind it or, you know, hope that they're somewhere else. And for now, you can see that Loud are looking at other options. The spike is in Sadak's hand, though. So where do they That's take this? Cool. They're trying to toy with that A expectation, but you know you're not going to pull out for away from this or anyone over while that cam is still in play. They have limited left. options, and I think they've realized it with eight seconds. They're going to be keeping hold of these weapons here. But finally, Fnatic starting to find a little bit of rhythm with this one. Absolutely, and this could potentially be the second layer. This is where Alpha's setup will shine. An early advantage created, slowing down the round for Loud, okay, and forcing them to start exploring the map slowly, contacting in, clearing space for themselves. But I want to see layers as well coming out from Loud, right? Is there going to be a timeout now? Because this could be that next step, right? Fnatic have shown their next hand. They've gone, right, okay, we're being pushed around the map in this sort of manner. Okay, cool. We're going to now have to find a way to identify this from what we've just learned in that previous round and come up with a plan. And it looks like that is indeed the case. Loud pumping the brakes now, slowing things down. A couple of vaults to play with as well, and they're only two off from the Seekers, so they've got a couple of key pieces ready to go. Definitely do have tools to work with. The other side of things, Fnatic, one away from the Seekers themselves, rolling thunder in hand here, but I think already seeing some examples of Fnatic maybe feeling like they need to change some small parts of their split play here on defense. But I mean, for Loud, in terms of this half, you want them to just poke that. They've already, in my eyes... They've done well enough. Yeah, tick in the box. They've got six on the board. And, and I've got to say, I also really enjoy the fact that as soon as we saw that adjustment from Fnatic, instantaneous timeout. It's such heads-up work from Loud, and especially from Frod as well, kind of backlining this, just watching over. And as soon as that adjustment came in, time to address it. Time to not let this slip away. Do not let them build back. Keep this one going for Loud. Six already is very respectable. It's near on job, job done, but still a couple more rounds to be had, and they want as many as they can get. You can never underestimate Fnatic. With four rounds to their name, though, trying to clutch onto what they can. Expecting too much of a switch up here from Loud. See what looks pretty similar to the same default we've seen. Although maybe Cow and Zine now to solo explore mid. Well, I'm just kind of interested if they start trying to exploit the extremity or does Fnatic read that that's the traditional counter? You stack middle, okay, well, we're going to pressure one of the, you know, the, the, the extremities on this map, be it A, be it B main. It is only three players dedicated towards middle this time. Previously, it was four. Not seeing the camera invested early either by Alpha, so aware of their goal potentially to find that. Now he's going to go for it. Doesn't necessarily garner the same value, though. No. Definitely limits the options for Chronicle's utility Scout destroyed. to be set in motion by the info off that. And they're actually oh, grouping you're outside you're eight here, rolling thunder to pave the way. This seems like the, I guess, the most ideal read. How is Alpha alive in this? He's just about shown that he is on side by pillar. And he's actually swung it, punishing less, adjusting to Aspas, but he can't do any more. All just coming through. Information free-flowing. 
They've got to know they are all here. Plants now down. Delau get aggressive, considering it. Looking towards CT, there's three players here. Durka drawing the fire. Smoke goes in. Fnatic readying themselves. Paranoia posted. They've got to work off the back of this. Slowly creeping out. Leo first. Leo falls first. Great trade from Chronicle. But the kills down to the 1v1. Sanak and Booster. The great IGLs. And it's Sanak taking Loud up to seven. Reading them so well and leading by example. A beautiful execution here. There's almost nothing shown across the map here by Lao to Fnatic. And just an immediate explosion onto A site here to look to overwhelm Alpha. Who still goes down swinging, got two yep. for his troubles. Talk about already getting six, being a win for Lao in the first half. They're looking to stretch their legs a little bit. A broken purchase here, Ooh. and Fnatic getting proactive. Yeah, but this time it's in the middle. How long does Aspas wait? We've seen the pace being slowed down a bit, but this flash, he's caught it. Oh, he's still got Dirk, and the paranoia a little disconnected and a little late, and he's fallen away. They're trying to triple down, double down. The Seeker's coming out. They're putting everything towards this, but they ain't winning. Two, he's going to find Chronicle. It's on both Alpha and Leo, and they are just scattered across this map. It's another example, Fnatic. Trying to get aggressive here, trying to actively take an opening engagement. Plant will come through. Look how disconnected Cowan Zine is right now. He's playing in the cut right now to try and find the rotation. He's going to hear the steps. He's, He's noted so, Alpha. So behind the wire on this. Playing so patiently. But Leo's looking. But how long does he wait? Yeah. Just gives it a oh, no. quick glance. Oh, this no. is. Oh, he's attacking! Leo! Leo. What? That's the quality of a player right there. Still so diligent. And now look at what we've got here. A very deep off-site post plant. Smoke's in the way. They've been forced to burn some of that utility. Forced to fight now. Post is still good for one. Quick on the trade. Leo's still alive. How much can one man do? Two, he's, the position is everything. Leo knows. He can't do anything about it. It's all but over loud. Eight rounds is exceptional. Blindsiding Fnatic here. And the opening half of Split. It's been a long time since we've had to say that, Lauren. We've credited Fnatic time and time again for their approach. And Loud showing a couple of different looks here. Showing that they've definitely done their homework as well. Absolutely prepared for this. This is everything we wanted to be seeing. And I wonder what Sideshow has for us. Thank you very much. So I wanted to take you through the pistol round in round three again and just go into it instantly. The pistol round started out, Aspas goes in super deep and Loud clean it up. And the reason why I think this is so crucial, it's the same problem that Fnatic ran into last time they played against Loud in that upper bracket. They allowed Loud to be able to set the tempo right from the start, winning pistols, winning bonuses. So I'm going to skip through this a little bit of the pistol round as it all got cleaned up and show you about this excellent idea they had heading into the bonus round. So you see here that Aspas falls, and this puts Loud in a 4v5 with bad weaponry, and yet they're still able to take advantage. How do they do it? Kawanzin finds this opening jumping past the aftershock, and at this moment, they take a little pause, and I'll pull things up on the minimap for you here. They're going to try and take out this camera very early and push less deep into A. Now, we saw them do this constantly on rifle rounds as well, because they realized the Fnatic are not playing aggressively towards ramp. Less has so much space here to get in, figure out where every part of the setup is, and you see crucially on the other side of the map as well that Tuiz is applying pressure into B. They have a bit of a fake pressure towards B Heaven as well. This is going to pull three players on the defensive side towards the opposite side of the map, and they can cruise to an easy A site hit absolutely finessing their way around the defensive rotations. It's beautifully called by Sadak, and overall, being able to find the holes and weaknesses in Fnatic's defense is credit to them to begin with. But for it to work instantly on a pistol and bonus puts Fnatic in these rough situations where the alt economy ends up being stacked against them as well, deeper into the rifle rounds. I think this is a massive problem for Fnatic right now. Again, considering that they are three out of 11 in their pistol rounds against top six teams. That's a problem. That's something that they're going to need to fix heading forwards into the second half. So. I'll send things back over to Pansy and Hyde Park.
Yeah, thank you for that. And yeah, our, our eyes are very much waiting for that second half kickoff here because Fnatic are in dire need of a pistol, to say the least. Sat on four, Mike. This is a long road back for them. And I think also noted very well there, the fact that Salak is calling a brilliant game is certainly not going to help. Uh, absolutely. And um, well, what I do want to know is as well, in some of the rounds where Fnatic are playing unorthodox, they're getting aggressive. That's where you got to give credit to Sadak in, in yeah. terms of coming into this, you've done your homework, you know what to expect. And then when Fnatic are throwing curveballs out, Loud actually able to control things in those sorts of scenarios we're talking about. They thrive in yeah. that sort of situation, but Fnatic haven't shown it much on split this year. No. Um, and if you are wondering what the slight delay is, of mm. course, there we're is going. another tech force. Um, We've gone back to back. Call us Fnatic. Um, <laughs> But for now, it is just the monitor issue, potentially, again, I'm seeing if it's Chronicle, because it was him before, I think, so I'm not sure. My vision is terrible. We are I'm several ancient. miles away from the stage. Yes, we're quite far off. So hopefully that's fixed up soon, because I've got to say as well, Chronicle having a very out-of-character game here. Two kills for him, not particularly a headliner. Um, and again, there's a reason that Chronicle's basically well, in every single final. <laughs> well, to, yeah, to come back to that, though, but the, the way that Lau playing, we're talking about him being drawn out of the position that usually he is the big swing factor in yeah. these rounds on defense for Fnatic. Mm -hmm. He's the one to really react off the spy cam, set things in motion towards A main or potentially towards mid on the back of a, a three-man stack in heaven. Mm. Uh, we didn't see Alpha getting played in. Josh was even noticing this the, the number of times that Les was able to just walk onto a side, figure out exactly where both trips are, remove the camera nice and early. Chronicle gets played out of the round at that point. The role that he plays in this setup for Fnatic, it's done, it's wraps. Yeah, and I, th I think we're seeing that one scoreline wise. And again, I, I think this is partly one of those scenarios where when you have the target on your back and you play a map so well, you become almost iconic for it, you get red. We've seen it from all the great teams. That's why it's so impressive yeah. when teams are able to do back-to-back -back events. Well, yeah, and, and then even on top of that, to run through a year and win every global title. It, it's it, This is the point where it actually becomes kind of a reality check for yes, Fnatic, it where it's just like, uh, we actually have to do this now. And teams have had six months to actually go back and look at what Everything. we've been doing and what we've not been punished for. Yeah, and a team like Loud, as we noted, with it being the likes of Fraud, kind of behind the scenes, coming, bigger, coming up with a bigger picture and then executed in the server by Sadak. They are absolutely on the money this time around. And now they've got their firepower in order. You kind of reactivated a lot of those elements that weren't quite working out. Am I seeing a play with their feet on the desk? Yeah, Alpha's, uh, Alpha, Alpha's lounging. Please. He is top fragging. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, he got his. Uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily give us a good indication for what's going on here, but still seem in fairly good spirits. Most are even uh, a little bit of crowd interaction going down as well. But yeah, it's, um, as soon as we do have an update for you guys, uh, I'm assuming it is the same thing with the monitor issue, but uh, it looks like yeah, we might um, know what's I've up. Got, I've got a little bit more fun update. It looks like we have to switch out the monitor completely. So it's going to be a little bit of an extended time so to keep you occupied and not just have to listen to our podcast. We're going to throw it over to a nice little bit of content leading forward. I didn't think it was going to get to the top 4. I'm going to get to my career again, so... Estou me sentindo muito feliz. Está sendo um, um torneio muito irônico, realmente, porque a gente pegou a, a, teve a revanche contra contra Fnatic, agora contra a LG. Está sendo um torneio muito, muito engraçado de jogar. Estou disfrutando cada momento. E eu vi que quando o DD estava fraca, é, ele podia estar picando o peito avançado. Só que eu sei que ele ficou ia ficar impaciente, porque a última vez que eu vi, ele avançou muito. Então, foi como uma guerra de paciência. Eu sabia que ele ia ficar aí, então só esperei no Pixel que ele não ia me esperar nunca. Não, não, não mudou nada do que eu fazia. Eu estou jogando realmente porque eu amo jogar. E isso me faz jogar melhor. Well, but hopeless here for Loud. They're looking for a pick. But I don't know if EDG is going to even give it to them. Oh, dire straight here. Kalantin drops. Oh, no. Kaodong. What have you done, Sean? Kalantin with two massive kills. Nobody plucking Asmus out of the sky. The Seeker? He's following you. I mean, he's got to be careful here. He's here by himself, and he falls. Sunk into the soil of the site. Kalantin with four. Chichu is going to have to 1v2 this if he wants to pull this off. Kalantin, 15 HP, the flash to take the line. Can Kalantin pull it off? Yes, he can. I think this team is not just simply to play. I think the rest is a consequence. 
sendo bem sincero. Primeiramente, eu estou muito orgulhoso de, de ver o crescimento deles, de ser um dos moleques que não comunicavam bem, não utilizavam bem as utilitárias, a, a estar jogando contra os melhores do mundo e estar realmente amassando jogadores muito experientes me deixa muito feliz. E eu acho que mesmo eles não tendo, não tendo um, um troféu um internacional, de jeito que eles estão trabalhando, acho que é só questão de tempo, sendo sincero. Estamos representando Brasil, América Latina, Américas também, porque a gente chegou aqui. Então, por favor, apoiem nós. Vamos a dar nosso melhor para, para representar bem vocês. Bren and Saisho. Just to give you guys an update, we are replacing a monitor right now on stage. So as soon as that is all uh, done, we will get back into game. But let's talk about this first half uh, real fit, real quick because we uh, saw that telestrator from you, uh, Josh. Uh, the slow start from Fnatic, Mimi, I think is costing them uh, once again here. It really is. I think that Loud has had a really good game plan thus far in this map, not just starting off with that bonus round, win, but also continuing it with, I think, some really well-constructed setups. I thought they did a good job of shutting down Alpha Yara as well with his setups, which he's normally so efficient at calling defensive rotates for Boaster, of course, around those setups, and Loud was denying a lot yeah. of that info. I mean, I, I kind of brought that up as well, just heading into the series overall, because Alpha setups are so pivotal to the calling of, uh, of Fnatic as a team. Josh, you broke it down as well, looking at, you know, round one into the yeah. bonus round as well, how they were just essentially disrespecting it because of the lack of presence of ramp control. They being needed able to spot variety. out the setups, right? Yeah, I think they needed more variety on their defensive yeah. setups, and they didn't have that. And I think that's one of the, the concerns that I had about Fnatic is when they get pushed, when they lose a pistol and a bonus, are they going to be able to idea generate? as quickly? Are they going to be able to come up with different ways of putting pressure back onto their opponents? And at the moment, the read, the prep work is good from Loud, and it's put the pressure on this guy right here. And that again, I think, brings up the question that we've had in previous series for Fnatic, where they have these rough starts where it doesn't seem like they have any ideas in the first half of always who is the player that is going to step up in the finals of lock -in. You had players stepping up like crazy. Durka, Alphier having great games to rally back there on Icebox. In the upper final, it wasn't quite there, but there has been other games where it's always that moment. It's always Fnatic catching themselves at the last second. And the question is if someone will be able to have that again here against Lab. Yeah, you would think that someone like Chronicle would, would have the potential uh, to pull these performances out. But as we mentioned before we went into the game, uh, last time they played against Loud Chronicle, Brent didn't have the greatest of performances. We put it down as the birthday debuff, perhaps, <laughs> you know, the curse. Yeah. But this time around, it feels like he's struggling uh, again in the first half. Yeah, he really is as well. And he's one of those players that you are going to need him to step it up. Look at these stats. These are on his birthdays played twice <laughs> on his birthday. Oh, poor guy. Now, today's not his birthday, but it wasn't the previous time that he played against Loud. But he's having the same kind of downswing in terms of individual performances. It's also, you know, coincidentally, Chronicle, who is getting his monitor replaced right now. So I'll give him a slight benefit. Yeah, definitely. Out. But I've also known pro players to, you know, get in their own heads with stuff like that, you know, if they're having a Absolutely. poor performance. But it really, I am going to be putting that focus on Chronicle, I think, to, to step it up as he inspects. What is that? What is this? He's got a, a cactus by the look of it. It looked like I what I was like a, a, a sausage. No? Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a lens to clean oh. the monitor. Oh, wow. Oh. There we go. Oh. We're, we're getting advanced Sheesh. out here. <laughs> but I, I think it is Chronicle that needs to be the player to step up for them because I, I always think of him as one of the heavy hitters in the core of Fnatic that's really going to be winning rounds, generating rounds for them. Uh, you know, I can't fault necessarily the utility that's been coming out his way, but, you know, when shots are afforded to you, when you are afforded duels and fights, you have to be winning it out for your team. You're expected to if you're Chronicle. I him as a top two player coming into this event. <laughs> yeah, but I think also Chronicle tends to set up other people to have that impact oh, earlier sure. in the round. And if things are already getting down to, you know, Chronicle taking duels, it probably means that Loud are already in a really good spot positionally where they've got themselves in like a post plan or something if we're talking about the first half. Uh, I, honestly, the player that I'm looking at in this map, because it's specifically split and he had a ridiculous game to dig them out of the match against DRX, it's Leo. I, I think that's the player that I would be putting a focus on because he has a bit more freedom in this composition as the Sky to go and flash himself around and make plays and find his own timings, stick a little tighter to Durka up at the front. And we have yet to see him really flex and take over the game like he did against DRX. Yeah, this head-to-head -head with Kawazi is interesting as well. Let's remember in the offseason, Leo was the, the hot free agent. People were like, Who, where is he going to go? He had offers left, right and center, whereas Kawazi 
we weren't quite sure, Mimi, what we were going to get. But in this matchup right now, Kawa has got Leo's number. Yeah, remember, Kawanzin was kind of an unknown name at the start of this year. He was one of the two rookies with Tuiz who got brought into this roster and it really developed so much with this iteration of 2023 Loud. Uh, I think the thing as well with this guy is that he's just been so insane individually. Beyond just what he can do with his utility, playing on the sky, helping his team to find the right calls, the right information in the mid round. He's also so clutch. And I think there is that direct parallel with Leo there. Both young guys, fantastic at the initiator, added to their team this year to really level them up. And you can see right now, Cowan Zine's stats are ridiculous. He's looking like the best initiator in the event. He's also one of the most aggressive initiators that you have, playing Sky most of the time. And if he doesn't have great performances, if he isn't high on ACS, which is, you know, not the only way that you would measure how good an initiator really? is. If you <laughs> if you don't have those big games from Cowan Zine, you get what happened in Tokyo, where he still takes the fights, but he ends up falling down and it's not as, you know, it's actually detrimental to the team. Yeah. He's, he's not quite nobody, you know, he's not that aggressive and solo, but he has those flair, those moments. Okay. Those is there some beef going on on the stage here? The panda's staring <laughs> down. Is that, na is that Nats's panda or is that, is that a different one? What's the law here? I need to know. Well, I haven't I mean, really been tracking the, the, the stuffed animal. Oh, bit, but... here we go. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Who do you guys take in the head to head? Oh, I mean, there are three dogs and one panda. And pandas, they, they barely want to survive as it is. They're gentle. You, gentle you, creatures. Don't they like only eat bamboo? Is it them who like only eats bamboo shoots and it's like actively poisonous for them? No, 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 no. that's koalas. koalas. Well, well, koalas yeah, yeah. It's eucalyptus. It's, that's eucalyptus. Yeah. Yeah. Eucalyptus leaves that they have to digest in yeah. their stomach. You're yeah. mixing it up. But at the same time, you, you can barely pay a panda to procreate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Trust me, they've tried. Yeah, the dogs, uh, are, the dogs are taking that one, I think. Yeah. That's how it's three to one. <laughs> I don't even know where we go from here. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's talk about, I mean, we saw Alpha a little bit there, but let's talk about Alpha versus Les, because again, this is the narrative of, you know, Alpha, he's a great aimer, but when it comes to the actual nitty gritties of being a Sentinel, Les, it feels like, is the number one, undisputed. Yeah, I mean, Les has just been so good thus far in this tournament. I, I think you can see some just direct crossover between these guys. The last time they played, it was a lot of the time coming down to these late rounds, coming down to these clutches, and Les is just winning so many of them. Yeah, I actually think that when it comes down to like the styles of both of these players, they're both aim first rather than util first. They do have good like util setups overall, and they're not they're not dumb players. But what actually takes them to being elite is their aim, is their ability to isolate duels and win their ones all the time. Can we get a t-shirt cannon at the desk? Uh, this is such a sick t-shirt cannon, by the way. It's the, yeah. it's, it's is the that the Raze? Yeah, it's the yeah. Raze Rocket. It's, it's the, the Showstopper. Oh, wow. can, we, but can we fire this out? Sue, I would love to do that. Earlier on, they were testing out this rocket. They're yeah. not going to show this on camera, but I'm going to dob them in anyway. <laughs> it was minus eights all day long. Oh, they were, no. they, they, were they roses? These, they were rosa alting these t-shirts. <laughs> oh. These t-shirts were dribbling into the There's crowd. There's some pressure here. Honestly, though. I'm, I'm, kinda, I'm going to look out and see if we can get one of those t-shirts. But first, I want to hear what Bren has to say about Alphia. About Alphia? Your yeah. best take about Alfie here. I think he's a fantastic gamer. He's probably one of the best aimers that we no, have just at real the quick, event Brent, itself. Before you continue, just as a reminder to everyone, Brent does not think he's a top 20 Dude, player. Okay, don't even start. <laughs> <champions. laughs> We've been bringing us up the entirety of yeah, the yeah. event. He, he, he said there that there's like, only 20 players left. Surely he makes your top 20 now. Yes, of course he makes the top 20. I don't know what I was smoking. I mean, I wasn't in Cali at that point, but <laughs> the Alfie versus Les, I mean, they are putting up the numbers. They're both heavy, heavy aimers in terms of that play style. You know, maybe the setups are not entirely there in terms of them, you know, thinking of that thinking it out themselves. They're not like born and bred Sentinel players, like when I think of players like Zagets or Nats, but they're still heavy hitters. They're still going to be the players that, you know, teams like Fnatic are leaning on when it gets down to those scenarios where it's just boasted Alpha Year left in just really uh, gritty scenarios where they have to try and pull themselves up out of rounds. Classic politician move. Get a question posed at you, just answer for like 45 seconds so people forget about their question. <laughs> Move on. I think Les dominated the matchup the last two times these teams did. The last he, he did on yeah. Lotus, yes. Yeah. He, he did. He absolutely took it to Fnatic. And I think that that's one of the ways that you need to win. You we, People asked Redgar a long time ago when they had, were the only team that had beaten Fnatic at any point. People asked Redgar, how do you win against this Fnatic team when it looked like they were unstoppable juggernauts that would never bleed? And he said, you must win your duels versus Alphia. Step one, you must be able to win your duels. And then you can focus on the strategy and the rest of that stuff. And that, I think, is one of the big things that Loud bring to this matchup, is that they're not scared. And actually, a lot of the times, the fear ends up being in Fnatic's heart. 
you know, they're the ones that are struggling to take the fights. And Loud are just super happy to let it devolve into want. Yeah, I think the pressure's off of, of the shoulders of a lot of teams that go up against Fnatic, I think, because, you know, we've been raising the expectations that this team of Fnatic should be making it all the way to the Grand Finals in a lovely carved path for them. Well, I have some good news for you. We're jumping back into game. Over to you, Fancy and Hybog. Thank you so much, Des, for filling that lovely amount of time. Um, hopefully no more issues. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the crowd's getting hyped up. Yeah, there's a, well, I mean, back in, well, the loud fans. Yeah. A tall order here to bring things back in the second, but definitely starts with a pistol. Josh was hitting on this in terms of the, the win rate overall, of, uh, actually against some of the teams in the later stage of this tournament. Now, they needed one before. Oh. Extremely cr crucial to He's actually caught on the jump peak there. There. That's him not following through, though. No, he's so drifting away. The test on the other side of the map as well. So Alpha going to be maybe not noted, but yeah. kept in mind. Allowed getting pretty there. mobile around the map. Drifting another player over towards B, but we can see the Fnatic are oh, looking towards that vent. And on the other side, Townsend, Frenzy, perfect place for it. He spotted a pixel, he knows it. He's seen enough here, drifts away. Flash is there. He goes back in, sends a motion, turns, couldn't get it, but he isn't alone. Loud, fight together. And another potential fumble of a pistol for Fnatic. Just spotted slightly in the spike in a disastrous yeah. position. Almost unrecoverable here. 40 seconds left to wow. work with for Bosto and Alpha, yeah, but this is going to require a miracle to get round 13 on the board in their favor. And it wants to hear loud, actually. We need to give up this space now. Most up. Dealt with though. Alpha, right. ghost in hand, 1v4 required. Show me what you got, Wonder Kid. Not an easy task. But he's got the spike. the spike. One small benefit to this. He's got 15 seconds and not many options. Looking for the first way forward. He's been found. Loud! Crushing Fnatic on that second half. Knocking on the door of double digits now. Very confident start as well to the second half to have such a, a zero hesitation in executing this trap here. Karen plays the timing perfectly and Aspas to come through and secure that position, secure the spike. You see the frustration starting to show a little bit now. Sheriffs in hand for a few of the Fnatic players. Definitely some Opportunities here in round 14. I've got to say, at the start of the day, walking out to the stage, Frod looked mean. He yeah. looked absolutely drilled in. Pissed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we talk about vengeance. Yes. Oh. Jesus. That was a shot. Talk about vengeance. Yes, they put Fnatic down to that lower side, but still, to be able to deny them the triple would be everything. After that Brazilian final. But now, oh bloody hell, Les, come off it! What is that? One enemy remaining. It's just Boaster. I mean, what are you meant to do? Cover going out. Sadax low HP. A chance to do some damage, maybe, but he was the only one that did bring a classic in here. So the range going to be a concern for him and staring down a Phantom and two Spectres. Loud, wisely playing distance on this one. 30 seconds left on the clock. 30 seconds left. And it should be a formality here, fun. really. Any damage would be very impressive, and it is! 20 seconds now. And the 1v2, the factor that Sadak is the one still alive on 19 HP. The timing! Sadak spots him just before the smoke blooms. And no more naughtiness for Boaster, as it's 10 for Loud. Well, yes, gets away with Gets away with murder. A classic kill on to Aspas. Les looking so clean here with the Ghost. Oh. Oh, it's fine with the investment you saw. Loud going to be pretty happy that they retain a Bulldog and a Phantom coming out of that. The double digits on the board. Fnatic have to answer back now. You see the concern being... Loud converted the bonus in the first half. Loud on 
Stack getting aggressive off the back too. Taking full B main control. Alt being worked towards for Aspas and contact for Les. He does have a Vandal, so Les can hold his ground somewhat, but the pacing of this, they are already taken towards sight. He can catch the cross for a second there, but he's going to decide against it. Sit safe, wait for the support. 20 seconds left on Sadak's fault line here. We've got some other utility to work with, but that being the key component here towards a retake. Unless you can find a stun here. Let's see, comes through Sadak. He's found one with the aftershock. How has Sadak done that? It's Durka going down, but Alpha holds, stands. Loud though, breaking again. in! How is this happening again? Disaster about to strike. Foster has to fall and loud. Yeah, Sadak knows it. That one is golden. 11 rounds now. Fnatic held on four. Back to back bonus conversions. Absolutely ridiculous from Loud. And the combo here, the gravity well. Beautiful. The Trailblazer to come through as well. What is. That third kill from Sadak is ridiculous. <laughs> he knows it as well. Yeah. 11 on the board. Fnatic will reinvest here. But it's far from perfect, Lauren. And now the Guardian, two Bulldogs to round out this purchase. We talk bigger picture that we'll lean on later, but the fact that Loud are going to be confident, they've had the read. They found what was the cure to Fnatic, basically, with 11 rounds to their name. This is magnificent from them. So he's now knows pressure his way. Dirk is in, and he's got an opportunity. He takes it. Two, he's down, and the side is theirs. Need to secure this, though, and need to get that plant. Need something else from Dirk, though, especially if they decide to try and contest, but they don't. They allow the spike to be planted. A decent util once again. Kounzi nearly caught off guard. What? Oh, oh, Dirk at a 5 HP. How is he still breathing? Keep in mind, Alpha is slowly creeping middle, but his counterpart, Les, might just catch him. He does! Red again, but Fnatic are on the side. They have the numbers, but Sadak's just taking out Durka. Three, oh, three. oh, it's coming in! Boasted to tonight, Sadak! Fly in, though! It's Aspas! Trade there for Les, and the 1v1! Les! Decimating Fnatic! 12 now! And only one away from taking map one. Like Loud are barely missing a beat right now. Another flawlessly executed retake here. Uh, this is just beautiful to watch back. And the kill, as soon as the kill comes through from Sadak, I was about to mention at the start of that round how many ultimates were on the brink. Real close. The one kill that puts the rolling thunder on the cards. And that swings it back in their favor. Ultimate here now for Fnatic. Some opportunities, sure, but loud on map point right now, Lauren. They need more than opportunities. They might need miracles. Not activating here on map one. And this was their pick. Less instantly chased down. Doku couldn't quite get there in time. Oh my god, Les! What is this guy on today? This is his domain. You don't want to walk that way at all. But they've got the first again, and above a minute. Plenty of time for Loud to drift away, force Fnatic's hand. Both are going to try and find something in the lurk here, but they got proactive. Loud are they exploring elsewhere on the map already? The opportunities, the options starting to be limited here for Fnatic as they drift over towards B main. There's still three here. Yeah, Alpha's disconnected here, going to try and make a late play through mid. But I feel that Les has had his number. Yeah. Cover going out. So they've got to try and make it work I'm pretty much against train. the odds. Maybe depending a little on those Seekers. Dewey's still with Kit. Going to stall out time. 40 seconds now. Who can close the gap? Who can get in? It's Boaster. Take it down, Dewey's, but the trade comes in. And the cross is held. Again, there are problems here. Forced away. Fnatic should have the site. Left. But do they get the plant? Oh, Zadax caught out for this is problems. This is big problems now. They're trying to play as a pack. The last two of them alive, Chronicle and Leo against the four. The lockdown comes oh, through as well. Oh, God, insult to injury. Right so Chronicle, a quiet game from him thus far. Now needs to be right above there. and beyond, and he's already dead. It's all on Leo, and he's fallen. 